One of my goals this year with the podcast is to go deeper and to explore, you know, the the hidden sides of being a leader, being a public speaker, standing in front of people, showing up for people. It's not just external. There is this internal life that we all have as human beings. And I want to spend some time exploring that getting real and honest with that, talking about some of my own experiences with mental health, with depression, with anxiety, with the insecurity of, you know, getting in front of an audience, being a public figure. Because as as leaders, you know, we we never stop being human beings. And so I'm recording this on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and this feels like a perfect place to to dig in and to explore something that I was fascinated by. Obviously, he's one of the greatest orators and one of the most remarkable leaders that we have ever experienced in the world is certainly in America. And what I was shocked to learn in one of the things I learned about him um, recently listening to his history, his life, is that he struggled with depression severe depression. In fact, uh, there is a book by Dr. Nasir Gayemi, and it's called A First Rate Madness, Uncovering the Links Between Leadership and Mental Illness. Uncovering the Links Between Leadership and Mental Illness. I wanted to say that again so you hear the link, leadership and mental illness. Because as human beings, you're not disqualified or spared from any of that because you're in a position of of leadership, of supporting people. The book documents Martin Luther King's deep struggle with depression and even suicidal tendencies. According to historians, King experienced great highs and lows. Some examples of this. He attempted suicide twice before the age of 13. As an adult, Martin Luther King Jr. experienced several bouts of severe depression. He kept his incidents with depression, a closely held secret, due to the mental health stigma at that time and concern that civil rights opponents would use it against him. The more that King became an integral leader in the civil rights movement, the more his depression intensified. So I was blown away. I would have never guessed this, especially when you listen to to his words, to what he he says in, in the speeches and... This feels like a good time to play a clip. I want to play a clip from uh, a speech he gave. And the speech is called, I've Been to the Mountaintop. It's actually his last speech. And he was speaking to an audience who had just experienced a setback in their fight for worker rights, for better pay, better working conditions, more human dignity. And he gave this speech called, I've Been to the Mountaintop. And I want to play you this part because it is just brilliant public speaking. And it's also just you can just see how it it connects with us. I mean, okay, let me play it. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech somewhere i read of the freedom of press somewhere i read that the greatness of america is the right to protest far right yeah when i listen to that i get a a chill I mean, just the the repetition, the rising action. I mean, you the crowd can't help but respond. I mean, he's got the burden of, uh, excuse me, the power of truth on his side, but also just the way he put that together is, I think, really, really beautiful and something for us all to to grow in as we as we think about being better communicators. But taking this back to what we now know is that Martin Luther King, as a leader, was also dealing with depression. Uh, in there's another quote from him I want to share. In 1959, three years into his public life, King felt depleted and he said this, What I have been doing is giving, 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 and not stopping to retreat and meditate like I should. 
to come back. If the situation is not changed, I will be a physical and psychological wreck. I have to reorganize my personality and reorient my life. I have been too long in the crowd, too long in the forest. I've experienced depression my whole life. It's something I have learned to manage. It's also something that has, I believe, given me a lot of strengths. For example, when you wrestle with something like depression, one of the common creations of that struggle is empathy. And empathy is this incredibly valuable trait for walking the world among other humans and you know, supporting them and serving them and encouraging them. It's to look at people not as just how do I win you over, how do I persuade you and silence you, but how do I change your mind to come look at things the way I do? How can I give you a vision? Which is, of course, what this speech, I've been to the mountaintop, is all about. I'm going to put a link so you can watch the rest of the, the rest of the speech because it's really, it's really something. But I don't want to lose the thread here. I want to talk about this idea of the hidden side of leadership, of wrestling with your own inner critic, your own imposter syndrome, your own struggles with mental health. Because, hey, hand up. If you're a human being, you, you've you got them. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure you've learned to manage them so you can show up. And what I want you to know today, there are in your life people who you lead, people who you serve, people who you love. And those people need you to show up fully. They need all parts of you, not just your confidence, but your vulnerability too. They need you to manage your mental health so that you can show up fully for them. And you need that too. And more importantly, you deserve that. So I wanted to to say that today because I really want to encourage you to Allow yourself time to be your whole self, to not ignore what's going on among the pressure of working endless hours and achieving impossible deadlines. I also want you to take time when you've been too long in the crowd, too long in the forest, to take time for yourself. And as Dr. King mentioned, to retreat, to meditate, to care for yourself, to listen to what you need. And and take that from somebody who has learned how to be honest about mental health, learned how to manage mental health. And and that's just me. (laughs) You don't need to take this from me. Take this from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who, in addition to all of the many things that he did and the vision that he set for people, wrestled internally, quietly, and severely with doubt, with fear, with sadness, And those things, to my mind, only make him a better leader.